Behind me is Hannam Lock, which is lock number one on the Kennet and Avon Canal. Below the lock, the River Avon is tidal and stretches through Bristol and out into the Severn Estuary. But today we're going to be travelling from lock number one, here on the outskirts of Bristol, into the city of Bath. Join me for a scintillating cruise taking in the beauty of the river, new crew, yes, new crew, and a dog who doesn't like paddle boarding. We'll get up close and personal with the fabulous Pulteney Weir in Bath and ascend the second deepest lock in Britain. The day starts with intermittent showers as the river meanders gently through Cleve Wood. I've spotted you, lanky heron. London Derry Wharf on the left, coal was brought here from the Bristol coal pit some five miles away by horse-drawn railway. It was then loaded onto barges and taken to Bristol and Bath and beyond. Through Canesham and the wind is now picking up a bit. The Canada geese don't seem to mind. Oh, this is the life, honestly. What could be better than this? Beautiful day on a beautiful river. Amazing. Wait a minute. Who's steering the boat? Oh my god! Who's this? Hey everyone, meet Val. Now Val moved onto the boat a couple of months ago now, isn't it? That's um, correct. Yeah. I've got to say she's taken to it like well like a duck to water really, haven't you? I think so. I'm <laughs> learning, learning to steer the boat and oh, you to steer do the, the locks. Boat very well now, but yeah, yeah. So uh, how are you finding boat life so far? 
absolutely love it. It's not it's bad, is it? Not at all. <laughs> so what do you like about it? Well, it's very freeing. Uh, I like living close to nature. Um, and I think I've been more creative as a result of being on the boat. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Val's a, a musician, actually. A singer-songwriter. So, um, uh, yes, it's, you know, this lifestyle is just good for our creativity. All round, isn't it? Uh, indeed. Um, so brilliant, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, we left Hannam Lock this morning, which is lock number one, and the plan is that we're going to uh, do the whole length of the K&A down to Reading, um, and then we're going to go up the Thames to the next slade, I think. After that, um, well, who knows? Uh, I guess we'll go on to the Oxford after that, and after that we have no idea where we're going. We'll have to suck it and see, as they say. <laughs> Maybe I'll edit that bit out, eh? One thing about this stretch of the river is the lack of official moorings, and wild mooring can be pretty tricky too, as the bank can be fairly inaccessible or steep. Swineford Lock is in an attractive setting and surrounded by old mill buildings and, fortunately, the gate has swung open for us. Now it has to be said, the locks on the River Avon are absolutely huge. I mean, I guess they must be probably 120 foot long, maybe even more than that. And width-wise, I would imagine they're probably about 15 feet wide at least. Although, that said, Many of them aren't particularly deep. I mean, this is a deeper one, but uh, which is about I think six foot ten or something. Um, some of them are only three foot something. Good idea also to uh, hold yourself to the side with uh, a rope around one of the bollards. wind is really beginning to gust quite strongly now, especially on the more exposed water. There's a water and Elson point here which is quite easily missed. But, of course, some people just think it's okay to moor here to the inconvenience of others. This boat has been here a few days. Sorry, but this sort of thing really gets on my pip.
OK, watch the dog on the first paddleboard. Kelston Brass Battery Mill and Annealing Ovens lies next to Saltford Lock. Brass slabs were beaten using water-driven hammers to produce basins, bowls and pans and that kind of thing. The water wheel would drive three hammers, which were in use until 1908. The wind has now become ridiculous and we chatted at the top of the lock as to whether to continue or not. Wild moorings in these conditions would be a bit of a challenge, but continue we did. The fleet moored on the straits above Kelston Lock. Rowing clubs regularly use this stretch of river for training, so keep an eye out for skulls. As they row facing stern, they might not see you approaching. So we didn't actually get all the way to Bath, um, the wind was really picking up and it was getting a bit too windy to, uh, to travel really, so, uh, so we decided to do a bit of wild mooring in this rather special place. We were going to move yesterday as well, but it was still very windy, so we spent a very pleasant day here. Uh, so now we're going to uh, start the engine, untie and travel for three miles into the centre of Bath. The elegant new bridge. So the River Avon that we're currently on is not the one that goes through Stratford upon Avon. In fact, there are five different River Avons in England, another three in Scotland and one in Wales, making a total of nine in Great Britain. The River Avon gets its name from the ancient Celtic language spoken in Britain until about the 5th century. Avon actually means river, so the River Avon really means river river, which is kind of a bit weird really, isn't it? Val opens the gate to Western Lock, which is the deepest on the Avon at 9 foot 3. It takes an age to fill, so don't do it on an empty stomach.
There aren't half some numpties around. No doubt a drunken prank, throwing a portaloo into the river. There are some lovely old wharf buildings on the approach to the city centre. The lock landing and bridge indicate the canal entrance and the flight of six locks. But we're going straight ahead to take in Pulkney Weir. Coming through North Parade Bridge. Pulteney Bridge and Weir can be seen in the distance. It was built in 1769 by Robert Adam. The estimate given for its construction was £1,000. It actually cost more than ten times that to build. It is the only bridge in the country to have shops across its full span on both sides and one of only four like it worldwide. I'm wary of taking Reverie too close to the weir, so we turn and reverse into it. Few people get this view of the horseshoe shaped weir and bridge. That was so good, we went round twice more. So, from the spectacular to the awesome. Up into the lock flight, and the second one is Bath Deep Lock the second deepest on the network. The largest one I tackled three years ago in episode two. This is a bit like entering a cathedral and I'm glad I've got some help from Val and from the boat Clover 2. This is a very pretty lock flight with large side ponds and ornate iron bridges with views over the city. There are moorings at the top of the flight, and also at Sydney Wharf. As usual, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, that would really help my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can see when I upload new videos. Also, please share on your social media. That will help my channel an awful lot too. Okay, hopefully see you next time. Cheers now.